Hi, my name is Leah Day, and I have just received my next quilty box and it's full of fun gear to play with. So let's jump right in and see what came in the box and what I'm gonna make from these new materials. So here's this month's quilty box. We've got a lot of exciting things to play with. Just in case you don't know anything about quilty box, basically it's a sub monthly subscription to get a box of cool gear and things, fun things to play with every single month. Uh, so they always include a card that lets you know everything that's in the box. I'll start going through it. We've got a scissor keeper. This is like a retractable thingy. I'll clip that to my shirt and then keep my scissors nice and handy. We've got two spools of beautiful thread. That looks like 100% cotton. Yeah, 100% cotton thread. Um, I think that'll be a lot of fun to play with. Crochet hook. This was surprising. I was really not ever expecting to find yarn and crochet hook, but I think that that's kind of a cool theme to go along with this book. I flipped through this a few times and I'm so delighted with it. Um, it's a combination of applique, uh, kind of a raw edge applique with thread sketching that's in free motion. And then they have these really cute projects that incorporate crochet. I just think that this is marvelous and I cannot wait to play with that idea. So. I'm excited that um, the book is Sweet Tweets by Erin Cox and just flipping through it, you know, all of the projects are really whimsical and, you know, really simple. I think there'd be really quick, fun projects. I think this is going to be a great book. And then we've got some uh, pre-cut fabric, cotton steel. Might cut out one of those apples or something. And then some batting. So lots of fun things to play with. I'm gonna take a look at everything and uh, kind of flip through the book and see what I wanna make. I'm thinking a little coaster of some sort, maybe something cute and sweet. I can incorporate both, you know, a little bit of patchwork, a little bit of crochet, something kind of fun. So let's get started. So I've pulled everything out and grabbed some other materials and I've selected these two fabrics and some white as the background of my little coaster project. And for these fabrics, I want to stabilize them because we're actually going to be quilting over the surface without batting, without batting or backing. It's um, thread sketching, or it's also can be called free motion embroidery. And so we're gonna be doing some stitching and we need some stabilizer. I like using French fuse. So I grabbed a little square of French fuse. I wanna get all the, the dust and lint off of this piece before I fuse it in place. So it's just a square of very lightweight, uh, fusible interfacing. It's very, very lightweight, but it is um, synthetic. So I always wanna use some sort of pressing cloth here, something that go between the French fuse and the bottom of my iron. So that should fuse that nicely. And so that's the background ready to go. You can flip it over and give it another press. This is exciting because it's really incorporating a lot of different skills, a lot of different steps, and a lot of different materials, things that you might have never played with before. If you don't have French fuse, any kind of uh, interfacing or stabilizer, uh, maybe if you do embroidery or you do garment sewing, uh, any kind of lightweight interfacing would work fine for this. Okay, so my backgrounds are ready and now I'm gonna prepare my little appliques. And in the book, the focus was really on these cute little birds. Uh, but I like the idea of using these fabrics. They already have these cute apples all ready to go. So I'm just gonna fuse on the fabric and cut out the apples. So for this, I am using Steam -a Seam, uh, light Steam -a Seam 2. This is my favorite fusible web. And how it works is you just peel off one side of the paper and then you're gonna have a really sticky glue side. Just place that down on the fabric, glue side down. And then now you're gonna press with the, it's this um, hot dry iron and I'm just gonna be, just drag it right across. Sometimes I count just to make sure that I'm pressing long enough. What I've found, and this is the reason why I like steam -a seam so much, is that you can't overpress it. There are a lot of stabilizers out there that if you overpress and do too much time, you'll basically just melt the glue and it'll just evaporate completely. But I found I can get away with kind of being a little overkill <laughs> with steam -a seam I often get distracted when I'm fusing, so that's kind of nice. All right, so that's fused in place. It's still a little hot, but I can start cutting out my apples. I'm just gonna cut out around that shape 
And I think this is kind of cute. I mean, how many times have you gone to the store and seen some cute fabric, but then been like, huh, well, I like that shape in that fabric, or I like that, you know, sign symbol, whatever, you know, that thing is, but I don't know if that yardage would necessarily look good in a garment, you know, the whole thing. Well, you know, using this technique, you could just cut out uh, a little bit of it, a little chunk of it, that little medallion, whatever, and use it in a quilt, use it in a little home deck project, and still be able to enjoy using that nice motif. So I think that's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out all of these. I've got some red ones here that I've already cut out too. It's just simple cutting on the line, no big deal. And then now I'm gonna place them on my fabric. I think it'd be kind of cute to do maybe three different colors like this. You want two different colors and these three have leaves and then that one doesn't. I think that's kind of cute. And I could stitch the leaf in on that one. Actually, I'm gonna cut the leaf off of this one and I'm gonna stitch them in with that free motion embroidery technique. There we go. Okay, so now all I have to do is peel off the remaining paper on the back of the fusible and it's sticky. And so it'll hold in place, but you can still reposition it. So if I don't like it right there, I can always pick it up and move it. So that looks good. And it's just really gent be really gentle as you're peeling the paper off because you can start to fray that edge. But really, I think with this style, it doesn't matter if you start to fray the edge. It's going to be a-okay because we're going to actually kind of create that and accent it by stitching over heavily with free motion quilting. So I think it's all good. This is just fun to play and, you know, throw something together very quickly and it not be perfect. I think really that's the lesson from this month is um, don't focus so much on perfection and everything being perfectly matchy-matchy. It's just absolute fun, creative play. So this is ready to go. I'm gonna press it in order to fuse those shapes in place permanently. And that's just holding my iron over. And technically with steam esteem, I should be using steam, but I don't have any water in this iron. I don't really wanna mess with that right this second. So I have found that I can get away with it usually. I don't have to use steam if I press it long enough. Um, when working with white, just a tip, always be careful. You can easily scorch that surface. So cover it up with something else before you press for any length of time. So let's take this to the machine and play with thread sketching over the surface. So I've started thread sketching and I just wanted to make it clear that I'm not using batting or backing for this step. I've just got that French fuse stabilizer on the back side and I have had to lower my foot. This foot has an adjustment on the side of it so I can lower it down and that way I won't skip stitches as I quilt such a thin layer. It's really important to have that lower down. So this style is meant to be kind of messy and um, you know, not perfect, basically. So it's really good to just, you know, let, let yourself sketch, let yourself be imperfect. It's okay, it doesn't have to be uh, travel stitched exactly. Like right here, I'm being intentionally messy through that leaf. I'm intentionally quilting off the lines. And I'm gonna go around this apple shape, I think three times. I might even swing around that leaf shape one more time. Just kind of come out here make it as wide and big as the others. This is just a particular style and it's, I think it's really good to stretch yourself and try different things. Even if you look at that and go, oh my gosh, that's so messy. I don't want, I don't like that style. Give it a try and actually, you know, see what, what it feels like to make it. Cause you might not like visually what it looks like, but you might like the feel of doing it. And it might be something fun just, you know, to occasionally let yourself break the rules. I think it's, um, you know, it's a little bit messy for my taste <laughs> personally, but I enjoy trying something different. That's really the key for me more than anything else. So I'm just going to quilt around all of these using the same style. I'm going to go around about three times, I think, and intentionally be messy and not echo or travel stitch properly and just let these really kind of come together in this organic way. So here are my apples. They've all been thread sketched and I'm delighted with how they turned out. 
So now I'm going to turn this into a coaster. I'm just going to place that right side down onto uh, a piece of fabric. This is just another piece of white, but if I had a print or something, this would need to be face up. So that way they're right sides together and then a scrap of batting. And I'm going to stitch around this um, this was roughly kind of around a five inch square and I decided I wanted a four and a half inch square around it So I marked that and I also marked lines so that way I would know where to stop and start leaving myself enough space To get out. This is called um, a pillowcase method where basically you just stitch all around it and then turn through the opening Let's get started with the three stitches and then back stitch and then stitch forward to that corner just gonna basically zip through this, stitching on the marked line all the way around. So I'm finishing up here, coming to that other mark and backtracking. I find if I don't mark a little reminder line of where to start and stop, I will often overshoot it and end up with too small of a hole to turn. So now I'm gonna take my time clipping away. I'm gonna clip the batting really close here so that way it forms that exact square. I don't want it to be too puffy along that edge. So I really want to clip it close to the stitching and then I'll clip the uh, fabric about eh, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch away. Again, I don't want too much bulk as I turn this. Now this edge right here, I want to leave a little bit more around that opening so that way I have space to turn that fabric through. I'll have to close that little opening with a needle and thread. So I'm going to trim this down and I'll meet you back here when I'm ready to flip it around and start doing the blanket stitching. So here we go. Um, I have stitched around the edge of my coaster and that closed up the hole that I used to turn it. And I've also gone around and marked dots and that's gonna guide my stitching for the blanket stitch. What I do, I just use this um, fine line pen and my ruler and I marked a quarter of an inch from the edge and dots a quarter of an inch apart. And that way when I do my blanket stitch, it's gonna be nice and even and exact. So I've uh, threaded up some embroidery thread on an embroidery needle, and I'm just gonna get started working off of this edge. I'm just gonna insert the needle somewhere out here and go through one of the holes. I'm trying to use a long enough thread that I um, won't have to, you know, add clip off and add more. I won't run out as I work around, but it is gonna be kind of long. So I don't know if this is a good idea or not. And this is one of those other things that I haven't done in years, but it's really fun to play with. I'm just trying to pop that. There we go. Pop that knot into the quilt and kind of hold. Probably should have done this from the back. Note to self, you're gonna leave a big giant hole on the surface of your coaster if you do that from the front and it's gonna be right where you don't want it to end up. So I'm kind of trying to shift it up and over. Action learning tip there, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that way I just did it. Okay, here we go. And get all this stuff out of my way. Now, blanket stitch is really, really, very easy stitch to do, but I always have trouble remembering how to get started. Uh, and so you basically just insert through the next hole, straight from that side, and as you pull through, get it down to um, just a loop on the surface, and then you're gonna go from the back to the front to pull that up to the surface, to the edge, I should say. So that's the effect that we're going for here. And I find not tightening it up too much, if you really, really get too tight, it's not gonna have that nice boxy kind of square look. 
So that looks good, I'm gonna leave it that loose. And then now all the stitches are gonna go the exact same way. So I'm gonna insert from the back, I'm sorry, insert from the front, pull through, and then when it gets down to be just a loop, then I'll come from back to front through that loop. Yeah, my thread is probably gonna end up being too long. It's feeling kind of clunky right now, but See, that's gonna look so nice. So I'm just gonna continue to stitch around, work in this blanket stitch all around the edge. And we're doing a blanket stitch because that's what the crochet is based off of. And this is kind of cool. I think there's a lot of different ways that you could have an edge. You don't have to do a blanket stitch. You could do a wide stitch on your sewing machine. Um, you could uh, go around the edge with another style of stitch, even just a straight stitch, or like a running stitch all the way around would work too. Um, this is just going to create these loops on the edge are what we're going to be crocheting into as we work around the edge with the yarn and crochet hook. So I think it's a cool base and it's certainly a fun technique to kind of combine. Gosh, we've done uh, sewing, we've done free motion thread sketching, uh, we're doing embroidery now, and then we'll do crochet. So it's really, oh, and also, you know, fabric fusing and uh, if you wanted to, you could put this back on your machine and do some free motion quilting as well. So it's really just a lot of different techniques, a lot of different things all in one go. So fun way to experiment on a cute little project. So I'm going to keep on working this in, finish it up, and we'll move on to crochet next. So let's get started with crochet. Let's start first with a slip knot. You form a loop, then form a second loop, and send that second loop up through the first hang on to the thread tail and the loop and then pull on the yarn and that will tighten that up nicely. And the cool thing about a slip knot is you can tug on that knot and that tail and it will tighten it up. So now I'm gonna put this loop onto my crochet hook and I'm gonna get started just with a single crochet into all of these uh, blanket stitch loops. So I'm gonna pull up and, and basically with crochet is all about loops on your hook. Okay, so I've got basically one loop on my hook right now. I'm going to go through the blanket stitch. I'm going to pull up a loop. So now I have two loops on my hook. And now I'm going to pull through both loops. Now I'm going to repeat that process. I've got one loop on my hook. I'm going to go through that blanket stitch. Sometimes you have to kind of poke and prod your way in there, but you, it'll work out. Now I'm going to pull up a loop. So I have two loops on my hook. And now grab that thread again and pull through both loops at the same time. So it's very, very simple. But if you don't, if you've never crocheted before and you don't have a lot of skill with the hook in your hand, it can feel a little foreign. So really start working with that hand, with the hook, so that it is what's reaching in and grabbing the yarn and pulling it up. What tends to happen when I, I've taught people crochet before, it's usually a lot of movement with the opposite hand rather than the hook hand. So use that hook, that's what it's there for. Pull through both loops. Single crochet is a very, very simple stitch and it looks quite cute. And you could keep going, it's a good base for uh, many designs. You could get the first ring around single crocheted and then you could add, you know, more decorative stitches. Like you could add um, kind of, you know, change, changing things up with your crochet, you know, doing two or three single crochets in one spot could kind of create a little flower effect. And there's tons of other crochet stitches out there. You create different stitches by the number of times you loop around yarn around your crochet hook and that creates different stitches. So crochet is a really, really fun thing to get into. If this quilty box has inspired you to learn more about crochet, it's certainly a very fun technique and there's so many cool things that you can make with it. So I'm just gonna work around and I think in these corner spots, I'll probably do uh, two single crochet in each of the corner spots just to help turn that corner nicely. So I'm gonna get right up to it. And some of these stitches can feel a little tight that can be a tip as you're stitching your blanket stitch. Remember to keep it kind of loose because you are planning on going back in there with the crochet. So I'm just carefully getting in there 
and stitching around. Yeah, I think a second stitch here. So I just go right back into the same stitch, pull up a loop, and then I send through two loops, just the exact same way. Now I'm gonna do the second corner stitch. This one seems to be really tight to the edge of the coaster. Don't forget, you know, don't hesitate to use your fingernails if you can kind of dig in there and get into there. Uh, a sm slightly smaller crochet hook might also be a little easier. This one's a bit big. And now I just go in there a second time. Seems like once I loosen it up, it's pretty easy to go in there the second time. And that worked right around the corner. And now I can go back to just doing one single stitch into all the rest. Oh, now here's something. Be really careful not to do this. I went, sent through and split my embroidery thread and you know, just separated into the different strands. You wanna make sure to insert your hook and it's all of the embroidery or strands are above the hook. You know, try not to split it. It can, you know, it can be easy to do. I just did it myself, but just be careful. Just working one stitch at a time. So I think that this is going to finish up really, really sweet. I think it's a cute, cute little combination of so many techniques. Gosh, I mean, we just learned so many fun things. We got to combine them all together and it's a fun project and you could continue to expand the crochet and really, you know, riff on a lot of different things. Um, I think that this book, Sweet Tweets Aaron, by Aaron Cox, I think this is a really wonderful place to get started if you're interested in patchwork and mixing crochet and you're also intrigued by that, you know, free motion thread sketching. If you're intrigued by that idea, I really think this would be a good book to pick up. So that's it for this month's Quilty Box. I really enjoyed creating this little coaster project and I think I'll probably sit here and make several more. It's really fun to play with different materials, different techniques and different quilting styles and experiment and just play. I think more than anything else, that's what I've taken from this month's box. All of these materials are just fun to pull out and experiment with and have some fun. If you'd like to learn more about Quilty Box, check out quiltybox.com. It's a subscription service to get you a box of cool gear every single month. So check it out. And until next time, let's go quilt.